Hi, my name is Jason Patterson. I'm an Arista SE located here in the Rockies. Today we are going to briefly go over how to set up S-Flow. Uh, if you'd like a little more history on what S-Flow is and how maybe it can benefit your organization, refer back to the Rockies newsletter. That is the topic of the article this month. So let's go over to my switch here and issue a show S-Flow. And I'll go over a few of these fields. So destination, none, so we don't have any external collectors set up. Uh, the sample rate is one in about a million, so that might seem very coarse, but we can consider the number of high-speed interfaces on the switch. We can potentially forward trillions of packets in a very short amount of time. Polling interval, that's set to two seconds. Uh, this is covered a bit in the article, but polling interval, in addition to exporting the flows, we're also going to export interface counters, and that is the polling interval. Uh, go under status here, we got running, no, polling on, no. Uh, so we can see that it is in fact not running. So I'm going to go ahead and actually copy and paste the entire configuration we want into the terminal here, and then I'll go over this line by line. So Eshflow sample dangerous 10, so dangerous is actually part of the syntax, but you would not do this in a production environment. Put it to one out of every 10 packets that would keep the CPU overly busy. Uh, and we do have a, a cop mechanism or control plane policing uh, so that we don't overrun the CPU, but nonetheless, you'd just be dropping packets at something at this rate. I don't have a lot of traffic in my lab, so in order to generate something quickly, I'm gonna set that artificially low. Uh, I'm also putting the polling interval down to one. So it was at two by default, we're putting it down to one. I've got two collector set up. So this one here is what you see to the right which is the Inmon S-Flow Trend. That's actually a free product. You can go to inmon.com and download that for free if you just want to kind of kick the tires and check out some S-Flow. This one is interesting. So 127.0.0.1, that is also covered in the article. But what that does is it sends the datagram back to itself, back to the CPU. And this system, the switch, is set up. It's integrated with CVP or Cloud Vision Portal. So in addition to all of the device state that we are streaming to CVP, which is incredibly cool, we will actually also export the S-Flow data in that stream. And then we specify the source interface, in my case, VLAN 1910. This command, so I am reversing the default behavior here. So when you globally enable S-Flow with this next command, S-Flow run, by default, it will enable S-Flow on every interface on the switch. And so we're gonna reverse that so that we have to explicitly go into interface configuration mode, which is the last couple of commands here, and enable S-Flow on the interface that we want it to run on. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter, S-Flow enable, and then over on the right here, fairly shortly, we should start seeing some traffic show up. So if we do a show S-Flow again, we could see we've got the destinations, we've specified the source and status running yes, and sampling is on and here we go so you can see that we've got some flows and datagrams coming in and up here we can see the source and the destination the ports that they're using and there's all sorts of information that we can pull out of this so vlans top clients top servers top connections um, top protocols so if we click on that we can see the various protocols in action uh, so there's all sorts of information that we can glean from these datagrams. If we go over to this tab here, I've also got CVP running. So I showed you that I'd set this up with CVP by having it point back to itself. Uh, there's more to getting CVP set up. It's very straightforward, uh, but that isn't enough alone to get it to send to CVP. Uh, so we already had streaming set up to CVP. And this has got some really nice graphs. Uh, if I had more time here, I could go into a, a deeper level overview of how we can visualize this information inside CVP and tie it down to a client, a destination, have it overlay in a topology so you can see the source and destination of a topology. And maybe we'll cover that uh, in a future video and maybe a future article. But that's all the time we have for now. So thank you and have a great day.